Hey guys, and welcome to the Game Dev Brotherhood YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how you can make a very simple but effective way to create a saving system in Unity. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to save the player's position as well as the amount and position of all the houses the player builds. We'll also be able to either continue and load the saved game or restart a completely new game. Guys, before jumping right in, we want to remind you that one of the best ways to learn game dev is alongside a passionate community. That's why we made the Game Dev Brotherhood, live classes where Noah and I teach you all we know about programming, game art and game design, and of course a vibrant community sharing each other's work, giving feedback and taking part in game jams. Within the Game Dev Brotherhood, you'll also find the project files to every one of our tutorials here on YouTube. The link to that is in the description and you can join for free for the first 7 days. Ok, let's get started with the tutorial. Alright, so this is what I've got so far. I have a main menu scene with two buttons, one for continuing our game and another for restarting a new game. These buttons don't do anything at the moment. Then I've got a game scene with a player character that can move around using the arrow keys. He can place houses by pressing on the space key and he can also destroy the houses he built by pressing down on the V key and colliding with them. There's also a save button and a main menu button that don't do anything. If you want to have the exact same setup as me, you can find the Unity package in the Game Dev Brotherhoods. Let's go inside of the scripts folder and let's make a brand new mono behavior script called main menu. Then inside of the main menu scene, I'll create a new empty game object also called main menu. I'll then drag and drop our main menu script onto our newly created game object. Let's now double click on the script to open it up. Ok, in the script, let's first of all import the using unity engine.scene management namespace. This will give the script the ability to switch scenes. I'll now make a public void function called new game. For the moment, inside this function, I simply want to head over to the game scene, so I'll type scene manager.loadScene, and then inside of the quotation marks, just type the name of your game scene, so in my case, that's simply game. I'll now copy and paste this function, and I'll call this second function continue game. Ok, let's save the script and go back to Unity. I'll now select my continue game button, add a on click listener, drag and drop my main menu game object in the slot and choose the continue game function. This button will now call the continue game function when we click on it. I'll do the same for the new game button, so I'll add a on click listener, drag and drop the main menu object and this time choose the new game function. Now just head over to File, Build Profiles and make sure to add both the main menu and game scenes in here. If we now press play, you'll see that these buttons now bring us to our game. Awesome. Let's now tackle saving the player's position. So I'm going to go inside of my scripts folder and I'm going to make a new model behavior script called saving system. Inside of the main menu, I'm going to create a new empty game object called saving system. I'll then add the saving system script onto this new object. Let's open it up. Let's make a singleton pattern so that we can easily access this script from other scripts and so that this game object carries over to other scenes. To do so, I'll just make a public static saving system variable called instance. Then inside of the awake function, I'll check if instance is equal equal to null. If that's the case, then we will set instance to be equal to this script. And we'll also use the don't destroy on load line of code and put in game object so that the game object that has this script attached to it doesn't get destroyed when we change scenes. So in our case, when we press on continue our new game, this object will get carried over into the game scene. Else, we'll just destroy this game object so that we're sure that there is no duplicates of this game object. Let's now make a public void save function. In here, we're going to save the player's position using two float player prefs, one for his X position and one for his Y position. Player prefs is Unity's built-in system for saving and loading data between game sessions. We can store floats, ints, and strings using player prefs. It stores the data locally on the user's device. The main advantage of player prefs is that it's extremely easy to use, but the main downside is that players can easily cheat by finding the file that stores the player prefs and modifying it, but it's really a great system to use for game jams and game prototypes. So inside of this save function, I'll say playerprefs.setFloats. This is the function we use to save a new float value. The first param we need to give it is the name of our player pref. I'll call this one playerx. The second param that we need to pass in is the value that we want to give it. So here I need to fetch my player script and get his x position. So let's quickly open up the player script and let's make a public static player variable called instance. 
Then inside of the await function, we will set instance to be equal to this script. Thanks to that, we can now go back to our saving system script and retrieve our player's position by saying player.instance.transform.position.x. Awesome. Now to save his y position, I'll say playerprefs.setfloat and this time I'll call it player y. And for the y value, I'll use player.instance.transform.position.y. Okay, that's all we need to do to save our player's position. Let's now also make a function to actually modify the player's position to the saved position. So I'll make a public void function called load. In here, let's modify our player's position by saying player.instance.transform.position and let's set it equal to a new vector 3. For the x position, we just want to retrieve our player x player prefab that we just saved. To do so, I'll just say playerprefs.getfloat instead of setfloat and we just need to put in the name of our player pref, so player x. We can also put a comma and give this float a default value in case it doesn't exist, so I can just put in a 0. For the player y position, we'll retrieve the player y player pref by saying playerprefs.getfloat player y, and again we'll give it a default value of 0 if it hasn't been made yet. And for the x, since we're in a 2D game, we don't really care, so I'll just put in a 0. Okay, we now have our save and load functions. We now just need to go ahead and call these functions. So I'm going to make a new c -sharp script called game manager. I'm then going to go inside of my game scene and make a new empty game object called game manager. I'll then attach the script to this object. Let's open it up. Inside of the start function, so the function that runs as soon as the game scene gets loaded, we want to go ahead and call the load function. So I'll say saving system.instance.load. Then I'm going to make a public void function called onClickSaveButton. Inside of this function, I'll call my save function by saying saving system.instance.save. As we're at it, let's also make a public void onclick main menu button function. In here we'll say scene manager.loadscene and we'll load the scene called main menu. Of course, make sure that you're including the Unity engine.scene management namespace. Let's save the script and go back to Unity. I can now select the save button, add a onclick event, drag and drop the game manager object in the slot, and let's select the onclick save button function. Let's also select the main menu button, add the onclick event also, drag and drop the game manager object in the slot, and let's select this time the onclick main menu button function. Alright, with that done, the position of the player should be able to get saved and loaded. So if we press play on the main menu scene and click on new game, move the player to a new position and then click on the save button and then click on main menu. We can now press on continue game and you'll see that the player's position has been saved. Even if you stop play mode and then play the game again, the position of the player is still saved correctly. Awesome. Now at the moment when I press on new game, the save position of the player is still there. That's not what we want. Clicking on new game should reset our saved player's position to be at the center of the game world. So let's jump back inside of the saving system script and let's make a public void function called resets. In here, we'll just say playerprefs.setfloat player x to be equal to zero and the same for the player y player pref. Now inside of the main menu scripts, inside of the new game function, right before going to the game scene, we'll call saving system.instance.resets. Okay, great. With that done, you'll see that now pressing on new game will reset our player prefs and the player will start back the game at the center. Okay, let's now tackle saving our houses. So I'm going to jump inside of the game manager script and I'm going to make a public vector2 list called house pauses that I'll set equal to a new vector2 list. So this list will be in charge of storing temporarily in memory the position of all my houses, but this will not actually save them. Now inside of my player script, right after the line of code where we spawn in a new house, I'll add the new house position to my list by saying gamemanager.instance.houseposes.add transform.position. And then right after the line where we are destroying a house, we'll remove it from the list by typing gamemanager.instance.houseposes.remove collision.transform.position. If we now save and press play, you'll see that the list is getting populated with the positions of the houses I make and they are also getting removed correctly when the houses get destroyed. Okay, we now need a way to save this list of positions. We could make a whole bunch of player pref float variables for the x and y position of each house, but that would be extremely messy, especially if we start having a large amount of houses to save. 
So instead, we're going to turn our entire list of house positions into a JSON string and save that one single string that has all the positions of all the houses as a string prayer pref. JSON is just the file format we use to save data. Sadly, we can't directly turn a list into a JSON string. Unity only allows us to turn an entire class into a JSON string. But that's fine, we can just go to the game manager script and make a public class called house data, for example, and inside of it, make a public list of vector twos called house pulses, and let's set it equal to a new list of vector twos. Let's also add the serialized field tag on the class, which is a prerequisite to be able to turn this class into a JSON. Okay, with that setup work done, we could go inside of the save function in the saving system script. In here, we will start off by making a house data variable called data, and I'll set it equal to a new house data. So here, we're just creating a new instance of our house data class. Then we're going to set our data.houseposes to be equal to our game manager poses. Now that both lists are the same, we can turn the class into a JSON string by simply creating a string variable called JSON, for example, and setting it equal to JSON utility dot to json and passing in our data objects. Let's go ahead and print out to the Unity console the value of this json string so that you can see what's going on. So back in Unity, let's press play, let's create a new game and place a couple of houses. If we now go ahead and press save, you'll see that we're printing out this big string that contains all the positions of our houses. This is our json string. Let's now simply store the string as a player pref. So back in my script, I'll say playerprefs.setString, I'll call it house data, and we'll set it equal to our JSON variable. Now the last step is to load in the house data in our load function and spawn in the correct amount of houses at the correct positions. So first of all, inside of the game manager script, I'll make a public game object variable called house prefab. Now back in the saving system script, inside the load function, let's retrieve our player pref by creating a string variable called json and setting it equal to string house data, and let's give it a default value of an empty string in case it doesn't exist. We're now going to check if the string is empty by saying if string dot is not empty json, and if it is, then we just want to return out of the function so that we don't run the lines of code underneath it. Now we need to convert our json string back into our house data class. To do so, I'll make a house data variable called data and set it equal to JSON utility dot from JSON house data and then pass in our JSON string. Okay, now that we have our data back has a Unity class, we will loop through all the vector twos in our data dot house poses list. So for each vector two pose in data dot house poses. For each element in the list, we'll instantiate a house, so game manager.instance.house prefab at our pause, and with no rotation, so quaternion.identity. Okay, one last thing, let's update our game manager.instance.house poses list to be equal to our saved data.house poses list. Also, inside of the reset function, we'll just set our player pref house data to be equal to an empty string. Let's save our script and go back to Unity one final time. Don't forget to drag and drop the house prefab in the variable slots on the game manager script. You can now press play and you'll see that our saving system is now fully functional. We can place houses, press save, click on continue game and they're still there at their correct positions. Awesome job. Remember guys that you can join our game dev community, the Game of Brotherhood, completely for free for the first 7 days using the link in the description. You'll get access to quality game dev courses, weekly live calls with us and other experts, monthly game gems, and most importantly, a wonderful community of game developers all helping and motivating each other. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.